Hi, I'm Tim Belcher and welcome to the channel. If you know anything about this channel, you know it's digital first for me. I started with a CNC long before I got into woodworking. I've been watching laser engravers and laser cutters on YouTube for months and I finally pulled the trigger and got one of these K40 lasers from Amazon. For the last two weeks, I've been having a blast with it. I have been doing some advanced projects like these lake carvings, which I'm going to make a start to finish video about, to acrylics, to rotary, to glass. I'm just having a blast with it. But today I wanted to do something a little simpler, perhaps a little more fun, and also something that would let you show my process when I'm approaching a material I've never used before. And in this case, I made some laser etched leather and wood coasters. So I had never used leather before this video. So I walk you through my process in learning the settings for etching grayscale onto leather, onto wood, and then of course the normal sort of build and finish process. So laser etched leather and wood coasters. This is how I made it. I'm starting out here cutting quite a few four inch by four inch blanks out of this two pound veg tan leather. And that will match these four inch by four inch three millimeter plywood blanks I got from Amazon. I'm using two of them here with some spray adhesive just to attach some scrap leather so that I can adjust my settings for etching and for cutting leather. Up to this point, I had never actually used the system to do either of those things. And until my honeycomb bed arrives, which is taking quite a while, I'm using these inexpensive picture hangers to lift material off the bed, and they seem to work fairly well. And I'm using this small key of plexiglass to set the focal length. And now I'm using light burn to frame where I'm going to etch. And what I'm etching here is just a series of circles that go from dark to light. It's a process you're going to go through on every type of material you're going to etch. And you're trying to find a balance between the speed and the power levels to give you some variance in colors, dark to light. And here I am in light burn and I'm going to take that image layer and change the mode from dither to grayscale. And at the bottom you'll see it say, True grayscale shading is hard to dial in, but it's worth it, and I sort of agree. On my first attempt, I had used the settings I was using for plywood, and you'll see very little difference in the actual colors of the etch, and you'll also see quite a bit of staining from smoke. And for plywood, I had been using a max power of 20 and a minimum of 7. I actually had to lower that to 11 max and 8 minimum. And that got me closer, even though I was dealing with a very small, only a 4% range in power of this laser. And I made a few more minor adjustments, and I think I ended up somewhere right below 12 and right above 8. Again, a very small range of power. Once I had a place that I thought was a fairly good starting point for the raster image, I started to test cutting parameters. And here I'm trying to find a setting that balances the speed, the number of passes, and the power of the laser to cut cleanly through the leather while leaving minimal burn stains on the outside. And once I found something I was happy with, it was time to start experimenting on those 4-inch blanks.
I find using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol after the etch and the cut does a good job of removing that stain without damaging the leather. I continued to make minor adjustments as I made the first, say, half a dozen in very, very small tweaks just to get that image and that gradient and that grayscale looking a little bit better. And then it was time for the wood. And again, I had put in quite a few hours over the last two weeks etching and adjusting wood. So I had some of these settings already dialed in. I knew I wanted to do some type of color fade option on these and I wanted to start with a very light brown alcohol based dye on both the leather and the wood. And that alcohol based dye actually does very well on the wood. Not only does it color it quickly, it evaporates quickly so that there's very little chance that the material will warp. I decided to go a little bit bold with the color. I did that same color treatment on the wood, but before I wanted to join the parts, I did want to make sure that I got a good seal coat on both sides of the wood. Where's your ball? Get your ball. Typically you don't want to use adhesive after you seal wood, but considering these were going to be in close contact with moisture all the time, I did want to get a good coat on both sides. I took two of those four inch by four inch leftover cutouts and glued them together and then back them by attaching a piece of balsa wood. And that gave me a quick little jig where I could align up my glued sections and get a good crisp edge with no misalignment as that glue took hold. And that balsa wood backing was flexible enough that I could just give it a little bit of a push and the part would come back out. And then I just cleaned up the edges, mostly to get rid of any uh, additional tackiness that was there from the spray adhesive, and also to prep them to finish the sides. Hey, thanks for watching. I know this was a quick and easy one. And if you thought it was worth it, hit that like button or leave a comment. And as always, consider subscribing. Cheers.